the world today faces a lot of challenges, especially in sustainability. So for example, there are the United Nations sustainability goals, which include infrastructure or ecosystems or water health. And to address the challenges that these sectors are facing, we need a new generation of robots that can engage with those environments and protect them by providing the data that can help to optimize operation, that can help to model those environments, that can help to then take database decisions. And for this, we need new type of capabilities of interactive flying robots that can perch to the structures, fly off again, that can dive into the water, take samples and fly off again, or that can fly in contact with the surface, doing tactile manipulation, tactile interaction. So by having this new type of capabilities, this new family of interactive drones, we can enable new applications that are really transformative and can replace costly and dangerous tasks that today are done by humans. In order to develop such robots, we really need to create new type of technologies and new methods of locomotion, interaction, mobility, control, autonomy, navigation, sensing. And today robotics has not solved these challenges. However, nature has solved it very well. And there's a lot of things that we can learn on the hardware, as well as on the control and navigation and sensing from nature that we can apply directly to those robots. So if you look at, for example, autonomous cars, they rely on very powerful sensors and computational units that collect a lot of data, process it, and then inform the next step. But it's very challenging to implement on a flying vehicle. So for example, if you have a flying vehicle that is the size of this one here, it's very difficult to put a big computer on top of this platform. And so for that, we can take inspiration from the ways how bees fly. And the way how bees fly is they use something called optical flow divergence, which means basically the movement of the environment on the retina. So just this movement can be sufficient to detect obstacles, avoid them or land on surfaces. So this is a fundamentally different design methodology compared to traditional robotics or autonomous cars which rely on a lot of data, a lot of sensing. Instead we go into minimalist sensing and reflexes, instincts, are built into the drone that allows it to move through this changing and complex environment. Another example where we take inspiration from nature is by looking at the spiders. They are amazing animals and they are amazing in what they can do and how they can build the nests or webs in completely unknown environments. So an example of that is a robot that we call the spider micro air vehicle, which can attach an anchor then pull back with a string and perch down like this, allowing it to physically interact with the environment. Now, by doing that, it is more energy efficient because it doesn't have to hover. It can suspend itself or partially suspend itself. It is more wind robust and it can come closer to the surface like these tasks um, that are difficult to perform with free flight based approaches. They can live on the wind farms where the vehicles can attach themselves to the blade, do inspection of the leading edge and damages on the wind turbine blade, improving the maintenance schedules and saving a lot of money for the operators. Another example of our work goes into the area of multi-terrain drones. In particular, into drones that can not just fly, but also interact with water. So land on water, or dive into water, and then return back to flight to return to a base station. This allows them to take water samples in areas that are hard to access otherwise, and often where the data information is needed in order to model or predict the coral bleaching or pH levels or temperatures of those environments, and like this be able to protect those environments more effectively. The way how this works is by combining bio-inspired methods of flying fish or diving birds to inform the way how we design and control those type of drones. Now important here to emphasize is that we have to link and tap into different disciplines from mechanical engineering to computer science to biology to chemistry in order to make this possible. And for that we need openness. So we need to be interested in engaging with biological research. But we also have to know about chemistry, for example, how to make water reactive chemicals that can be used for combustion to propel water air transitions. So we need to understand these different disciplines and we need to educate a new generation of engineers that can 
not just understand these disciplines, but also engage deeply with other researchers and also learn and tap into the knowledge base of those disciplines. The end goal of this is to create these robots in a way that they become like artificial animals that live in the environment. In the same way as our immune system works to protect us, in a way that we don't notice, that we, that we don't have to worry about. In the same way, the drones or flying vehicles will be part of the immune system of the world, the immune system of the cities, of the infrastructures, of the natural environment. And this basically is the goal of what we are working on in this group.